Hi everyone, it's Tech Tip Tuesday, or Monday, or Wednesday, or you know, whatever day you're watching this video. Um, I'm here to teach you a tech tip, uh, or give you a tech tip. Anyway, um, so this idea comes from something I've been thinking about, learning about, which is um, celebrating the diversity of ideas, right? Making sure we're celebrating many ideas and not just looking for one main idea. This thinking comes from a four part webinar series I'm taking with Dan Fagelson, who is like, you know, a big name in the reading comprehension game. Um, and so one of my teaching focuses, like my uh, one thing I was a goal I set for myself this last week was to ensure that questions I was were the questions I asked in my lessons. Um, we're generating lots of talk and not just asking for one right answer. So like halfway through day one, I realized this is a cop out. Um, I ask open-ended questions all the time. So I shifted my goal a little bit um, to make sure that I'm celebrating these ideas, right? It's one thing to ask open-ended questions, but it's another thing to actually like document and celebrate those ideas. So for one of my book clubs, I decided Okay, we're gonna keep it really open and I'm just gonna take notes. And what ended up happening is as I was in it, I'm like, oh, I'm taking these notes. Now I can label these things that readers are doing. I can name them so that they can become generalized skills. So that we're, it's not just talking about it in this one book club in the context of this book. This is something that we always do when we're reading, right? This is a skill we can always do. Um, and I really thought it was powerful. So I wanted to make this tech tip video because it's virtual school. Technically, everything we're doing is in the realm of tech, right? Um, and this format, this what, how I'm going to do this, um, lends itself really well to virtual teaching. So, this I'm going to show you the end product first. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to put it right here. So this is what it looks like at the end. Um, this was in a book club meeting. It was about 30 minutes, and. Um, I just typed every single thing that the kids were saying, right? I said, I have an idea, I'm thinking this, I have a wondering, um, I have a prediction, I would like to add on to what he or she said. So I'm just typing as fast as I possibly can. And then every once in a while I'd pause and I'd go back to the document and I would say, I would say oh, do you know what Selena did here? You know, she was thinking about um, what happened previously in the text and she's using that to help make predictions for what's gonna come next. Readers do that. Readers do that all the time. So I would highlight it, make a comment, and then it would put that text up on the side, right? And then I would type and type. Everyone would be talking. I would type, 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 type. Um, and then I would notice something else. Oh, you know what? You're talking about reading the pictures. Let me add a comment here. Highlight the text. Readers read the pictures to find out clues to give them more details about the story. That's something we always do in text, right? So it's it's this idea of um, of uh, taking these these ideas they're bringing about these this specific book, and then generalizing it, right? And this is all done in live time while documenting and having it visible for the students. Okay, so that's what it looks like in the finished version. Um, let me show you what it looks like live. Here you see a recording of my class. This is in Google Meet. Um, this is a book club meeting. So we're discussing chapter eight of Donovan's Word Jar by Mona Lisa de Gross. And you can see, you know, it always starts out really casually, just like, tell me what you were thinking as you read chapter eight. And so students started telling me what they were thinking. And I started labeling that. Um, with a thinking and I put that in bold and then I just typed what the kids said. Now you can see I added a comment to the site already. Um, I think it was readers go back to their predictions to see if they were right. So that's something that one of my students organically brought up on his own. He said that's something he did as he was reading chapter eight and so I highlighted that because that's a reading skill I wanna instill in my students. So I highlighted it, added a comment and then put that on the side. Then the conversation continued, um, just saying, you know, what else were you thinking? Now, something that's cool is that um, 
I do the add-ons, right? So if I drop down a, a line and then I move the bullet marker over to the right, I use an indent and students can add on to each other. This has changed how students have these kind of discussions because it, like, it's a visual reminder that we should be adding on to each other or challenging what each other says. Um, and it makes it more of a conversation. I feel that that's, it's hard to cultivate conversation in virtual meetings, um, not only for students, but I feel the same for adults. Um, so having that add-on really reminds students that we should be talking back to others' ideas. Um, so you can see I've added a few more comments on the side, things I noticed students were doing um, that I want to, I want them to continue doing that work when they read other books. You know, like readers notice small details in the pictures or readers, readers think about the whole story, not only part by part. Um, these are like general reading skills that they should be practicing anytime they read. Okay, so I'm finishing up and then I just go over the things we learned and that's it. So I've shown you how this works in a student book club. But as I was doing it, and now I've done it in four different meetings and um, it just feels so powerful. This could be done in the beginning of a unit, right? If you do, um, if you're starting like an inquiry and you just want to open up a discussion and you have some sort of prompt and you can be taking notes and labeling some ideas or themes of the conversation. This could be done in science. I feel like, you know, um, if students are, if you're labeling those scientific behaviors, um, if students are talking about that, it could be done at the end of a unit in a reflection conversation, um, thinking back to, you know, how students thinking has changed and you can be labeling, um, learning profile traits, um, you know, just so many different ways this can be used. It's, it seems like such a good reflection tool, learning tool. Um, and also you have like an immense amount of notes, like anecdotal notes from the conversations. The four times I've done this, now I know exactly who's participating, how many times, the kind of thinking they're having, the level of um, contribution, um, and it's all there, it's in that Google Doc. It was helpful for students when it was live and it's helpful for me when I need to think about next steps. So yeah, overall, I don't even know what to call this. Documenting conversations maybe? Documenting conversations for teaching? Mm, I'll brainstorm, don't worry about it. I'm not gonna make you watch me do this. Uh, if you have any questions or you wanna talk more about this, please get in touch with me um, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.